Hey guys, how's it going? Hope you're all well. Uh, welcome back to the Scrumpy Kiwi and us sort of looking at 8th edition and what it's bringing to 40k. Uh, we're specifically going to be looking at the Primaris Marines because it's now been about 48 hours roughly, give or take, since they were announced and there's been a lot of reaction to them. So I guess the easiest thing to do is just cut straight to the core of the issue, which is, are they necessary? Do they work? Do they fit in with the law that we've got going at the moment? And what do they represent for Games Workshop? So, you know, are they are they necessary? Are they perhaps the best choice when bringing out something for 8th edition? Well, as much as I love Space Marines and I'm a massive Space Marine fan, I think that other races certainly could have been prioritized i think however gw were probably limited with how they'd left the story with the fall of cadia um so they kind of had to really deal with the issue of chaos encroaching on the imperium of man would it have been cool to see something for tyranids or for orcs perhaps absolutely that would have been really cool but that's not how the story was going, so they've had to focus on Space Marines. So whilst it would have been nice to see other races get the love that the Primaris Marines are getting, it would have, you know, what we have is what we have, and I think we've kind of got to accept that. Um, do they fit in with the law? Yes, they do. Some people have been saying they've been shoehorned in. Well, I think that's really subjective. I think we can look at that from either side and make fa fairly valid points for me personally i believe that with the story being that gilliman has come back him being a forward thinker always one step ahead you know the fact his past experience with the horus heresy has let him see how mankind can be brought you know really to the point of extinction you know i think that given the amount of time it's been as well since he ordered um you know the the primary marines to begin you know to the 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 genesis um, you know, it's been 10,000 years since he ordered that. So naturally, after 10,000 years, you'd hope they'd have something to show for it. Um, and with the Imperium sort of, you know, really at its weakest point since the Horus Heresy, I think it does, I think it works within the law that something extreme has to, you know, has to happen. I think you could argue, well, couldn't Gilliman just rally all of the Space Marine Legion, uh, Space Marine chapters together and kind of, you know, recombine them back into the legions of old yes we could but then it, i think then you'd find a lot of people then arguing well you know if he did that why did he bother with the codex of Stasis in the first place so you know i think the, i guess what you could say is that really whatever anyone suggests there's always going to be someone who can detract that so swings and roundabouts isn't it but as far as i'm concerned i think it works in the law the third thing is, what do they represent for Games Workshop? And this is the biggest thing. I genuinely believe, having given this a lot of thought and finally sort of come to what in my mind makes, oh, uh, well, a lot of sense. Are Games Workshop planning the Horus Heresy point two? Point two? Yeah. No. 2.0. <laughs> Horus Heresy 2.0. I think I'm going to do another video on just this, but for the time being, let's just have a little, let's sort of tie it in with the Primaris Marines. Rebute Gilliman has come back. He's instigated a lot of changes already, but he's going to be doing more. Essentially, he is now the Lord Commander once again of the Imperium. His authority is absolute. He has spoken to the Emperor. We don't know what was said, but something clearly motivated him to go right. Now's the time, we're going out, we're going to sort out the galaxy, we're going to reunite the Imperium of Man, it's going to be swell, lovely, we're going to have a great time, buckle up. With that in mind, and the fact how he's brought out this whole new race of super soldiers, you know, the Space Marines 2.0 if you want, what can we, what, what can we what can we draw from this what can we look at and say well this seems rather similar to events of the past well quite simple the beginning of the great crusade at the before the great crusade humanity was in tatters you know old knight had ravaged the imperium well the galaxy not the imperial man because it didn't exist yet but mankind was basically on its knees the emperor comes out of you know his 
I don't know what you call it, his Out of the Shadows, reunites mankind, introduces humanity to his super, you know, his genetically engineered superhumans, the space marines. Let's forget the Thunder Warriors for now. We're just focusing on the basics. He then go, takes them out on the Great Crusade, reunites the galaxy almost, um, you know, humanity across the galaxy. He brings them all together under one banner. He's got the Primux. He's got the Adeptus Astartes. It's all going great. And then the hubris and the jealousy and the bitterness of certain Primarchs results in the Horus Heresy. And thus a massive civil war engulfs the human race and the, you know, and the seeds are sown for 40k at the moment. Let's look at Gilliman and what he's doing. Humanities are on its knees. Gilliman has come back. This superhuman visionary with, you know, able to, you know, basically, you know, outmatch any adversary, overcome any problem. He's created a new super soldier, a new breed of super soldiers, and he plans to go across the galaxy and reunite it. What are the repercussions of this going to be? Yes, some people are going to be happy about this. Some people are going to be like, yes, finally, humanity back on top, dominant. There are going to be other members, other factions within the Imperium who are not going to like this. And we have to wonder, how far will this go? Remember, the High Lords of Terror, who've had absolute power up until now, they're not going to be happy about being basically canned, essentially. They have no more power anymore. Yes, they may be there as a sort of, you know, as figureheads, but as far as actual control, that's all with Rebute Gilliman now. Likewise, the Ecclesiarchy. Rebute Gilliman is probably going to want to try and slowly push them out. After all, he's a visionary, he's a progressive, he remembers, you know, the way the Imperium was before, you know, the sort of the theology and the superstition took over. He's going to want to return it to that, if possible. Maybe slow, but he's going to want to do it. And at some point, you know, the Ecclesiarchy and the more fanatical elements of the Imperium, they're going to dig their heels. What's going to happen then? You know, the High Lords of Terror have the Minotaurs on their, you know, you know, at their beck and call. Are we going to, you know, there's been, again, if you go to 40k series, you'll see that they're potentially maybe a legion worth of Minotaurs. Is, are we going to see them perhaps trying to, you know, finally step on Gilliman and sort of brush him under the carpet? We don't know what the repercussions of the Primarch Marines will be. Some chapters will be happy to see him. Other more... Puritan chapters may not be happy to see them. The Dark Angels may not be happy with these guys coming in, after all, considering they've got so many secrets. The Blood Angels, who have their curse, you know, the, the, the Black Curse, may not be happy with that potentially getting out. The Space Wolves, we have no idea, you know, how they'll react to these, you know, these basically Terran-forged superhumans being pushed into their chapter. After all, they are very... They're quite, you know, they're quite strict when it comes to, you know allowing only Fenrisians into the Space Wolves. So we have to ask, are these the beginnings of the Horus Heresy 2.0, or in this case, the Gilliman Heresy? That would be very interesting to see, an Imperium completely shattered, fractured into all these different factions vying for power, as well as the Chaos Gods and the Tra 